to define this part of the module is any of the above. Everything covered under the previous headings other than perhaps the precast cross-wall system can be combined with any other option to meet end-user requirement. However, site interfaces and assembly are more complex when different prefabrication methodologies are combined in one development. This part of the module looks at the characteristics and performance criteria of the following hybrid options. HRS steel and timber, HRS steel and concrete, concrete and LGS, concrete and timber. The most common form of this hybrid is a combination of conventional steel frame with mass engineered timber components. The B-Sky B offices in West London are a good example, with cross-laminated timber floor slabs bearing on the steel frame, supporting raised access floors with the underside of the floor panels as the exposed surface finish. The roof structure is a combination of glue lamb beams with pre-finished timber roof cassettes with timber. You may have some experience of this hybrid a combination of conventional steel frame with precast concrete as it is used extensively in the UK. Steel frame elements can be pre-assembled into what for the Leadenhall building in the City of London were defined as mega components, eight-storey sections of pre-assembled structure bolted together on site. The concrete elements include stairs, pre-stressed planks and omni slabs. The last of these has to be completed on site with in situ concrete. It is the city's newest iconic structure. Right from the onset, the approach to building a skyscraper in the capital city centre was groundbreaking. With very little laydown or storage space, a traditional build was out of the question. So through digital engineering and DFMA, the building was meticulously planned and virtually constructed. This meant visualizing and analyzing all aspects of the build, from the initial site setup and handover, including the steel protected pedestrian walkway and the access platforms. The new ground floor slab played an important role in the construction of the building. It accommodated the site access and egress from both Leaden Hall Street and Undershaft. It formed a working platform and a transportation hub for staff and supplies. It was here that the material and passenger hoists began their journey to the work front. And it provided a launch pad for the mega frame that is the iconic feature of the tower. Construction of the main superstructure started with the erection of a strong box in the center of the building. This T-shaped frame formed the backbone of the structure and combined with a smart cranage strategy underwrote the whole construction methodology. Rising above the center tee box, the north core contains the washrooms, risers and lifts, and being modular in construction, was erected in advance of the main office steelwork. Manufactured as a series of tables containing all lift and cladding fixings, along with the service risers and horizontal distribution, they were delivered to site ready for installation and connection. The tables were erected seven stories at a time, independent from the mega frame, and included a gantry crane on rails fixed to the uppermost level. The installation of the main building cladding in a safe and secure manner was carefully engineered by the Langerork team. A safe working area, five meters from the edge of the floor plate was designated for the cladding installation. Working from the mega level, the cladding hanger brackets were installed to the underside of the mega beam and the floor levels. After the brackets were surveyed and checked for alignment, a mini crane was used to lower the hangers into position and assisted by workers in mechanical platforms secured to the structure. This process was repeated until all the hangers in a zone were finished. The walkways were then fixed to the frame from a mechanical access platform. Each external cladding panel was delivered to the mega level floor by the material hoists and then guided carefully down the outside of the building into position. Working from the safety of a mechanical access platform, the panels were secured in location. After the outer skin was installed and the floor made weather tight, the double glazed panels that formed the inner skin were fixed, one at a time, 
using a manipulator, thereby completing the external envelope of the building. Pushing the boundaries for off-site construction on a massive scale, Lang O'Rourke, in collaboration with the design team, were able to reduce the amount of deliveries to site, which in turn minimized disruption to the local community. Over 80% of the building was manufactured off-site and delivered to be assembled on-site by a significantly reduced labor force. The Leaden Hall building, along with the Lang O'Rourke Way, is changing the way we plan, conceive and deliver the built environment. This is another hybrid that is used extensively in the UK, albeit usually with an in-situ rather than pre-cast frame. Prefabricated open and closed panels with an LGS frame are used for the interior and exterior walls. In the case of the latter, these are often described as unitized cladding, complete with windows, doors, insulation and interior and exterior finishes. Combining a prefabricated product with very tight tolerances with an in-situ structure can be a challenge, resulting in site modification of the prefabricated components. This is another hybrid used widely in multi-storey buildings in the UK prior to changes to the building regulations in 2019. Structural insulated panels were used as the inner leaf of the exterior wall on in situ concrete frames with the 7.5 metre long panels vertically spanning two floors of the facade as the backing and support for a weather screen or other types of exterior finish. This allowed a facade to be installed with either mast timbers or a self climbing scaffold system. The various prefabricated materials, systems and components can be used in any combination subject to careful consideration of the interfaces, building regulations compliance and site assembly conditions. Off-site completion levels of up to 85% can be achieved with 3D volumetric units. On projects where prefabrication of the structure is neither appropriate nor practical, off-site and MMC methodology can still be employed by maximising the use of components and sub-assemblies.